Okay, welcome. So in this video, I just want to go through a few more partial derivative examples with the hope that if you're just needing some more practice, this could be helpful to you doing partial derivatives. So we're going to do three examples, and these ones just involve some more complicated derivative rules, but just remember everything that you know about derivatives already still applies. So for our first example, let's find the partial derivatives if g of x and y is equal to x plus 5 cubed times the square root of y. And so we're going to find the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y. So at any point, if you'd like, feel free to pause and try these on your own. I'm just going to sort of go through them because these are just meant to illustrate a couple different examples, but please seriously pause if you want and try these first and you can come back and check your work. Okay, so let's do the derivative with respect to x first. So this is the partial derivative with respect to x of x plus 5 quantity cubed times the square root of y. Okay, so when we're looking at the derivative with respect to x, we want to just consider the things with x as the variables, and then anything with just a y is a constant. So this square root of y is actually like we're just multiplying by some constant here. Then the x plus 5 cubed, this is what we're going to take the derivative of because this is our variable. So when we go to take the derivative, I'm going to look at that x plus 5 cubed, and that 3 is going to come in front. Then I decrease the power by 1. I would technically take the derivative of the inside. That's the derivative of x plus 5. But that's just 1, so it doesn't really do anything, so we usually don't write that. And then we just leave that constant there. So just remember, when we're taking the derivative of a constant, of something multiplied by a constant, sorry, the constant sticks around, right? So if we had 3 times x and we were taking the derivative, it would just be 3. So here if we have square root of y times x, it's just square root of y. But actually here we just have this square root of y being multiplied by the whole thing, so it sticks around. And then this would be our derivative. So it's just 3 times x plus 5 quantity squared times the square root of y. And that's our derivative with respect to x. Okay, let's do the derivative with respect to y. So here we're taking the partial derivative with respect to y of x plus 5 cubed times the square root of y. So now our roles switch. The square root of y is now our variable, and the x plus 5 cubed is now our constant. So rather than using product rule, since we have these things multiplied together, it's really just like a constant times something. OK, so when we go to take our derivative, we're going to leave that x plus 5 alone. It's just a constant and the cube still. And then we take the derivative of this square root of y, the square root of y. So I'm going to think of this as y to the 1 half. So the 1 half comes down, and I decrease the power by 1, so it becomes negative 1 half. Then we can simplify this. So this is x plus 5 cubed. And then I'm just going to move that negative exponent into the denominator. So the square root of y comes into the denominator. I'm just simplifying it. But really what we had previously in the previous line is technically done. I just wanted to make it look a little prettier. So we take the derivative of the square root of y as its variable, but we leave that x plus 5 cubed alone. OK, that is it for that one. Let's try another example. Let's say we have k of x, y. And let's say it's 3x squared e to the 4y. Then we're going to find the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y. So first we have the derivative with respect to x. And remember, you can pause now if you want to try this first. OK, so we're taking the partial derivative of 3x squared e to the 4y. So x is the only variable we're looking at, so this x squared is going to be a variable. But then everything else is a constant, so we really just have a big constant multiplied by x squared. 
So we take the derivative, that constant stays around, that's the 3e e to the 4y, that whole thing's a constant, and then we multiply by the derivative of x squared, so that's 2x, derivative of x squared. Then I can simplify, combine like terms, so 2x times 3 is 6x, and then I have that e to the 4y left over. And there we go, that is my partial derivative with respect to x. Okay, so we'll do something similar for y. So I'm taking the partial derivative with respect to y of 3x squared e to the 4y. So here, the 3x squared, this is a constant. And then my e to the 4y, I'm going to have to use that as the thing with the variable in it. So when we take the derivative, the 3x squared just sticks around as the constant, and then we're going to multiply by the derivative of e to the 4y. So the derivative of e to the 4y, we use chain rule, we leave the e to the 4y alone, multiply by the derivative of 4y, which is just 4. So we can simplify combining these all together. I'm getting 12x squared e to the 4y. And there we go. That is our partial derivative with respect to y. So these things just revolve, sorry, these things involve you just remembering your derivative rules, remembering how to take derivatives, but then just being extra careful to separate the things out that are constants and only take the derivatives of the stuff that has a variable in it. All right, let's do one more example. So let's say we have w equals cosine of xy then we're going to find the partial derivative of w with respect to x and the partial derivative of w with respect to y. So here cosine of x times y is our function. So if you'd like, you can pause and try to find the partial derivatives. So for the first derivative, I'm taking the derivative with respect to x of cosine of x times y. So I'm leaving the y as a constant, but in here I have this variable x. So we're going to treat the x as a variable and take this derivative. So to take the derivative of cosine of something, we're going to need negative sine of that thing. This is some chain rule happening, right? So we have cosine of some stuff. So we take the derivative of the outside. The derivative of cosine is negative sine leave the inside alone, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inside. So now we do the partial derivative with respect to x of x times y. Okay, so now we just simplify, we go to the next step. Remember that the x is our variable, so when we do this other partial derivative inside this problem, I'm getting negative sine of xy, and then times y. So that y is coming from the derivative of x times y. y is the constant being multiplied by x, so the y is all that is left over. And that's our partial derivative. Okay, last part. Let's do the partial derivative with respect to y. So same sort of process here. We just have the y as the variable. So we do the derivative of cosine, that's negative sine, leave the inside alone, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of x times y with respect to y is just giving me, we keep our negative sine of xy, and now we just have the derivative which is x. So x is the derivative of x times y with respect to y, and there we go. Those are our two partial derivatives. Okay, hopefully that helped you with some more examples for finding partial derivatives. Good luck as you work through some of the problems on your own. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.